consideration provided by Consumer Cellular. This is Sam. How may I help you? This is a butt dial. Well, somebody's butt. Just thought I'd let you know that with Consumer Cellular, you can get the same exact coverage as the leading carriers, but for up to half the price. Choose Advil Liquid Gels for faster, stronger, and longer lasting relief than Tylenol Rapid Release Gels. Because Advil targets pain at the source of inflammation. So for faster pain relief, Advil the pain away. E.T. at the CMT Music Awards. Monday on E.T., our exclusive backstage with country music's finest in Austin. Ooh, what a good weekend for music. Join us Monday mm. for that. We've got one more thing to show you before we say goodnight. Take care, y'all. Bye. Bye. Our sons yeah. go to school together. They do. They're in the same kindergarten class. <laughs> they had a fight, you know. Do you know oh, about I this? Oh, I heard in, in our parent-teacher conference. I know that I think Billy was sitting in a chair. Uh-huh, yes. And Ennis then went to maybe sharpen a pencil or something, and then Billy came back and was mad that Ennis was in his chair. And then there was a displacement. Happening now. It's been nearly six months since a hit and run on this access road along Highway 90 left a 15-year-old boy dead. Coming up, we speak to his mom, who says she's desperate for answers and looking for closure. And check your laundry cabinet and check it twice. We're gonna tell you why eight million laundry detergent pods have been recalled. Today is the very last Weather Authority Eclipse Glasses giveaway. I'll be live at Ikea doing that, talking about Eclipse weather forecasts along with changes into the weekend and severe weather potential next week. Here's a five, starts right now. And first at five, it's been nearly six months since 15-year-old Joshua Villa Jr.'s life was cut short in a hit and run. Police have no suspects or clue on the type of vehicle involved. It's a very tough reality for the mother who tells John Paul Barajas her son may have only been 15, but his role in the family was much more significant. I just felt my son was thrown when, the way he got hit. It's a scenario Cheryl Narvaez plays out in her head often. On October 30th, her 15-year-old son, Joshua Villa Jr., was hit and killed by a car that took off along the Highway 90 access road near Pin Road. Nobody deserves to be left just like that in the ground. Nearly six months later, San Antonio police say they're still looking for the person responsible. With advice, she says not only did she lose her oldest child, but the man of the house. He always tried to make sure that his brothers were well taken care of. He was, he always tried to be like that father figure for them. Then again, he was still a kid. She explains Joshua was a playful kid who loved to dance and was always joking to try and cheer others up. He'll grab his shirt and he'll like twist it inside out, acting like like he was a girl or whatever. And it often worked. It's those moments of being silly and just wanting her attention that she misses most. Mama, 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 mom, 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 mom. You think I go to McDonald's? I'm hungry. I wish I could like just bring him back, you know, bring him home. She adds he loves sports and was trying to figure out what he wanted to do in life. He would always change it up. He was going to go to college or he was going to go to the army and it just got cut short. That advice tells us now she waits and hopes the person behind Joshua's death is caught. Just heartbreaking, devastated. Um, I just, I just wish one day that I get the answers and I get that call. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. I want to get you some breaking news now on the northeast side of the city. This is the 11,700 block of Perrin Bidal, not far from the post office on Perrin Bidal, if you know where that is. San Antonio police say a man was sitting in a car when someone came up to the vehicle and shot into it several times. The car was parked in front of a nail salon. Police say the suspects took off in a white sedan. The man who was shot sitting inside the car died. Police say he looks to be in his 20s. We'll try to get you some more information on this breaking story a little later. Check out traffic right now, and we are going to I-10 at Probant. And you can see it is very heavy in both directions on I-10 as people get their weekend started. 
And that was not the case during the morning rush hour and most of lunchtime on the east side on I-35. Drivers on I-35 South who were trying to get onto Loop 410 stuck there for a while, just like the drivers on 410 at Houston Street. A major headache, the result of an overnight crash in the area. It was about 3 a.m. on 410 southbound, apparently, when a driver tried to exit too early. She ended up hitting a utility sign pole. We're told she was transported to the hospital and does have life-threatening injuries. The cleanup impacting Friday's traffic for a good part of the day, but now driving at 410 and Houston Street at this moment is pretty good. A smoky scene on another major highway slowing down drivers heading to work and school. An 18-wheeler catching fire near Loop 1604 at Lower Seguin Road just after 6 this morning. These images posted to Facebook by Converse Police. They show the 18-wheeler engulfed in flames. That incident caused traffic issues for several hours after the northbound lanes of Loop 1604 had to also be shut down. Shirt Cibolo Universal City School District says bus routes were delayed today because of all this. We still haven't learned what caused the truck to catch fire or if anyone was hurt in all this. Are you ready for Monday? We are. This year's total solar eclipse making parts of South Texas and the Hill Country uh, a place to be. Yeah, you only have a couple of days left to get ready. And here at KSAT, your Eclipse Authority, we want to make sure you're able to witness the historic event safely. Happening right now, our Adam Kasky live at the IKEA in Live Oak for our Eclipse Glasses Giveaway. Adam. Oh, baby, yes, we're live in Ikea, and you know how Ikea is a bit of a, a maze, right? But that allows you to see everything to make sure you got everything that you needed. We are closer to the checkout area. We've Come on, people, yeah, we're, the eclipse is Monday! Thank you, friends. The eclipse is Monday. We're getting close to it. And so we have not only our weather authority glasses will be given out momentarily, but Ikea has several hundred of their own glasses. So there's a ton of them. If you come out here at any point, just it's as supplies last. Yeah, pick up some Swedish meatballs and then be able to safely uh, view the eclipse as we get on into Monday. Now, speaking of that, of course, it all comes down to weather. If only we could have a day like today for the Monday eclipse. That'd be too easy for us. Be too easy on us, right? So obviously we are expecting some changes as we get into the weekend and then even as we get into Monday. And we're gonna detail all that in a little bit. I do have to say, one nice thing about coming out here this time of year, like right now, is I just saw the Thunderbirds warming up in the sky. That was rowdy. That was so cool to see. So you never know, especially with the air show going on throughout the weekend, what you're going to see up in the air. Now, speaking of the air show, oh, we need to talk cloud cover for tomorrow. So we'll get into all that and talk eclipse and have a little fun coming right up, right? <laughs> This Monday, KSAT is covering the historic total solar eclipse from all angles of totality. Adam Kasky and Justin Horn will be positioned in Fredericksburg. Closer to town, Jen Tobias Strusky and I will be in Bernie. And right here in San Antonio, Mia Montgomery and Sarah Spivey will be at Owie Elementary. Mike Osterhage and Fiona Gorostiza are going to be at The Rock at La Cantera. We'll be with you from the start, during, and afterwards. Our two-hour coverage of the actual solar eclipse begins at noon, but we're giving you bonus coverage throughout the weekend and on GMSA. Let's witness history together. KSAT is your eclipse authority. And, of course, David Sears and I are going to be anchoring all of it from right here in the newsroom on the set. Everything you need to know about the total solar eclipse can be accessed through this QR code. You'll instantly see videos and articles that help you navigate here in San Antonio and up in the Hill Country. And don't forget to submit your solar eclipse pictures. We want to see them. We want to see that you've taken them safely, though, too. Go to KZ.com and share your picture on KSAT Connect. Now to that warning about laundry detergent. Millions of packages of those colorful but dangerous detergent pods are being recalled. As 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains in tonight's recall roundup, the problem is with that colorful packaging. Procter & Gamble is recalling more than 8 million bags of laundry detergent pods. This includes various Tide pods, Gain Flings, and Ace and Aerial pods, all manufactured since last fall. 
There are three reports of children ingesting the contents of the packets during the time these were sold. If you have them, keep them away from children and contact Procter & Gamble for a refund. <laughs> Two million Black & Decker Easy Garment Steamers are recalled. They can expel hot water while in use. This is actually an expanded recall because 82 people suffered burns since the first recall a year ago. Empower Brands is now giving refunds. <laughs> And Walmart is recalling 51,000 kitchen gadgets, the mainstay's cordless electric mini chopper. Five people suffered serious cuts assembling the chopper. You can return it to Walmart and get your money back. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Across America, for the first time in more than a century, a very rare earthquake shaking buildings and nerves. As you can see behind me, even the Statue of Liberty from Maryland to Massachusetts. The epicenter was in New Jersey, but the effects were wide reaching. Yeah, despite being big enough to be felt by millions across across a wide region, authorities actually say today's earthquake not large enough to cause any extensive damage. ABC's Derek Dennis has the latest. The shaking captured on numerous home security cameras across parts of New Jersey. This one in Summit. Another in Morristown and this one in Rockaway. The U.S. Geological Survey confirms the 4.8 magnitude quake was centered near Lebanon, New Jersey, about 50 miles west of New York City. I called my mom. I was like, Mom, is this an earthquake? She started screaming. She's like, get outside, get outside. <laughs> and all my neighbors were outside. President Biden has spoken with New Jersey's Governor Phil Murphy, offering federal assistance to the state if needed. In a time of crisis, uh, the president is there. To him, I say thank you. And his entire administration, FEMA, obviously, and other, other branches of government we've been in deep conversations with over the past couple of hours. The quake also felt across much of New York. This is one of the largest earthquakes on the East Coast to occur in the last century. So I immediately directed my emergency management team the second we received word of this to start doing damage assessments. Local station WABC on the air when it began. So we just experienced an earthquake here uh, in the tri-state area. We're getting calls into our newsroom from Connecticut, Long Island, New Jersey, and of course New York City. People feeling the shock. There was no reported damage or service disruptions to the New York City subway system and no reports of injuries or major damage to any infrastructure. Of course, we're still assessing the situation and we'll continue to update the public. And I encourage New Yorkers to check on uh, their loved ones. There were ground stops at area airports to check for runway damage, but operations have since resumed. Amtrak says there is no impact to its service, but has implemented its earthquake plan, which calls for inspection of critical infrastructure. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. Still ahead, the total solar eclipse, not the only big draw this weekend, the Great Texas Air Show. There's a wine fest and there are giveaways also going on. Right in the middle of all of that, that's you stuck in traffic. How to get around town next. I want to give you a look at what else we're working for the, for the news at six. The decision to demolish the current Institute of Texan Cultures building again spurring speculation. Could this be the site of a new Spurs arena? We're going to take you through the trail of breadcrumbs at six. Nearly two years after the shooting at Robb Elementary School, a teacher who carried students out of a broken window to rescue is in an all-new fight. This time it's for her workers' compensation payments. Our KSAT investigates team digging through the medical paperwork on all of her denials. That story coming up at 6.30. That and more on the news at 6. If you're heading out this weekend in San Antonio, it's probably a pretty safe bet you're going to see a crowd almost everywhere. It seems something for everyone is happening on Saturday and Sunday. Multiple events on the same day, though, also means traffic. Traffic Authority RJ Marquez offering some help on how to maneuver on the roads. Well, we have got a lot going on in the traffic department. First of all, we of course have the Valero Texas Open taking place at TPC on the north side, and we are also expecting a lot of people to come in ahead of Monday's eclipse. But let's talk about two different events that are also going to have a lot of people and a lot of traffic in our area. We're going to start here on the northeast side, the Converse area, because we have the JBSA Randolph Air Show taking place Saturday and Sunday. Biggest things you need to know for the public is that the main gate, if you're coming in from the north part of JBSA, that's going to 
to be off of FM 78. If you're coming in from the south part of JBSA, that's going to be on Lower Seguin Road. So those are going to be our main gates going into Randolph and the one exit is going to be right there off of FM 1518. Again, these events here, this air show is going to be taking place Saturday and Sunday. Let's take you to the downtown area. Speaking of Sunday, because we have Ciclovia taking place here in the St. Mary's area. So basically we're going to start our Ciclovia routes from North St. Mary's there at 281. We're going to travel through the strip past 35 and all the way to Brooklyn Avenue. Also winding down things here at Lexington Avenue as well. So just be aware of some of the street closure here. North St. Mary's again from basically 281 all the way to Brooklyn. There will be crews out there and there will be signs for all of our people that are taking part in Ciclovia. That's going to be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Sunday. So again, a lot of things going on. Make sure to check out KSAT.com for the very latest information. Have a good, safe weekend, y'all. Look at outside right now. Everything's moving along just fine. I know a lot of people are headed over to the Hill Country, though, this weekend. Yeah, absolutely, to get in position for the eclipse. But for those of us who aren't, is this beautiful weather going to continue? Giving away eclipse glasses and our forecast. Let's check in with Adam Kasky. Oh, short answer there, Steve. Uh, no, this weather's not going to continue to when we need it. With the air show going on, on at Randolph Saturday and Sunday, Valero, Texas open tomorrow. Things are going to be very different. And for Eclipse Day, things will be very different. We're giving away our Eclipse glasses. I figured I'll just keep them hanging right here like a pair of sunglasses, right? Yeah, hey, there, here we are. We're, we're at Ikea. Yeah, woo! And they're also, they also have hundreds of pairs of their own for some of their IKEA family card members, so they can get that. And they also have their Fiesta medal, which will be unveiled tomorrow. Whenever I come to IKEA, I always love to look at the names of things because, you know, they've got these unique names, kind of funny looking names to us Americans compared to the, to the Scandinavians. What'd you get? Oh, I got a Sindavik de Besta Oxberg. You know, <laughs> that's what I got. Okay. We're gonna get into the forecast right now. We're gonna be here up until seven o'clock. We've got hundreds of glasses as supplies. Last, go to where you check out and you can just cut straight into the store then if you don't wanna maze through the whole thing. Weekend forecast, I mentioned earlier Thunderbirds. Saw them warming up, flying overhead, going off into different directions. It was awesome. Tomorrow's going to be tough. I know they don't fly till the afternoon and the ceilings will lift a bit more into the afternoon, but take a look at the weekend forecast. Drizzle fog to start the day tomorrow. Very low clouds and low ceilings, which will lift as we get into the afternoon. 78 the high, then, you know, an isolated shower Saturday night while we're sleeping. As we get into Sunday, cold fronts through, so sunny, low humidity, and mid 80s. Looking and feeling good. Better for day two of the air show and the final round of the Valero Texas Open. Vast sunshine right now, so our temperatures, mid 80s locally, low 90s as you get along the Rio Grande. Now, here's the key. Dew points are going to change a lot over the next few days, and that's important because not only when you feel it tomorrow, but it's going to cause uh, the fog drizzle and low ceilings, but then Monday, that humidity is back into place, and it's going to make our forecast very complicated for the eclipse. Nonetheless, Fog and reduced visibility tomorrow morning. As that humidity surges back into place, our future cast shows uh, visibility is down to a few miles potentially at times as we go through the morning. And then uh, by noon, the visibility will be much better, but those cloud ceilings, the base of those clouds will still be fairly low for the air show, but improving. Even a few peaks of sun by the afternoon, 61 in the morning, 78 tomorrow for the high temperature. And notice those storm chances creeping up a little bit next week. Monday after the eclipse, we're talking 30%. Tuesday into early Wednesday, we're at 40%, so scattered. And judging by what we're seeing, the conditions, any storms in that time frame could become strong to severe. Okay, let's talk eclipse. See this map? See that big swirl in the western U.S.? That's the swirl that brings the pre-eclipse cold front. And then we're also watching that other swirl upper disturbance near Alaska as that brings the high thin clouds. As these both move in, it's going to set us up in a pattern where we're pretty much guaranteed those thin high cirrus clouds that can be very translucent. Let's hope they are. Okay, it's too early to tell to get into the hour by hour of where the gaps will be in them or how thick they're going to be. These clouds haven't even formed yet, and we're trying to predict exactly the little details with them. Also, 
low clouds with that humidity coming back into place Sunday night into early Monday, it's a common pattern we see, the humidity coming off the Gulf, and then that creates that low overcast and low stratus in the morning. The question is, when is it going to break? How many high clouds, how thick? When exactly the low clouds clear? It's unfortunately still too soon for hour by hour. I know, I wish I could say meteorology, the science and technology is there to give you the specifics. It ain't. I'm sorry, it's just not. Okay, so then as we get in, we talked about those storm chances. Hello, hello, hello. What are you most excited for for the eclipse? Yay, to get some glasses so I can see the there eclipse. There you go. So you can safely watch it before totality. Yes, yeah, so you go to ksat.com for all the information on the eclipse. Everybody say eclipse on three. One, two, three. Eclipse! There you go. All right, we'll be back at 6 o'clock. A lot more fun. And I'll show you Ikea's Fiesta Metal. You know he's going to go around all weekend with those eclipse glasses. Like That's that. of course. Yeah, you know, it's the Caskey way. So it's, cool. you know, what the cool people do. That's yeah. right. All right, game in the Big Easy, it will not be an easy game. No, but I'll tell you what, the Pelicans, though, are struggling a little bit right now at the wrong time of the season. They're also dealing with injuries, as are the Spurs. Now, the Spurs are at the Pelicans, and there's one Pel who really has had his way with the Spurs this season, and Akshay Batia is still your leader at the Valero Texas Open. Coming up. No, sadly, I look at the leaderboards. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good thing or bad thing again, but, you know, I'll peek at it. And every time Akshay Batia looked at the leaderboard today, his name was still on top in big board sports. The Spurs will close out their four-game series with the New Orleans Pelicans tonight. They're looking to avoid the broom. The Pels lead the series 3-0, and they are currently in the playoff hunt. Pelicans big man Jonas Valanciunas, not pictured, has had his way with the Spurs this year, averaging 19 points and 12 rebounds in three games, his best numbers against any team this season. This morning at Pell's shoot-around, he was asked why. Well, you know, I'm just doing my stuff, being active, you know, setting screens, rolling, getting some post-ups. I'm going to do my stuff, you know, it's not, as I said, nothing changed. We got to come out no matter what team we play, we got to, we got to play 100%. Spurs and Pelicans will play tonight at 7. The Pels have lost three in a row. Keldon Johnson and Jetty Osman are both out for the Spurs with injuries. The second round of the Valero Texas Open is still going down as we speak. World number two, Rory McIlroy teed off at 7.53 this morning, trying to add to his three under par yesterday, and he did with a two under 70 today, taking him to five under par after two rounds. First round leader Akshay Batia had a solid round, but not as good as his nine under yesterday. Here's his approach on nine. He'd par the hole in Carter two under 70 and sits at 11 under par after two rounds. He says he felt calmer than he expected to playing with the lead, but still it's not easy. It's stressful for sure. Uh, wasn't my best stuff. I felt like I struggled a lot off the tee today. Uh, golf swing didn't feel great with any of the longer stuff, but iron play was still phenomenal. Wedges were good, made some nice putts. Uh, and I know I'm reading the greens really good, so I kind of understand when I'm missing putts right now why that's happening. So it's, it's a good, good kind of understanding of kind of where you know I need to improve the next couple days. And here's the leaderboard. Round two is still in progress. Batia leads at 11 under par. Russell Henley and Brendan Todd are five shots back, while Rory McIlroy is minus five, 139 entering Saturday. And we'll be right back after the break. Thanks so much for watching the News at 5. World News up next. We'll see you back here at 6.